Welcome. In this video tutorial, we will use Weblink's screen recording component to capture gaze while participants interact with computer software. The tutorial will demonstrate use of the camera setup and screen recording components, as well as general configuration settings. Weblink can capture and record pretty much any software that runs on a Windows PC, including word processors, spreadsheets and programming environments, computer-assisted design or even applications that you may have programmed yourself. In this demonstration, we will record gaze while participants work with RStudio, the popular front end for the R Statistics package, but this is just an example. At the end of the tutorial, we will take a quick look at some data recorded by the Weblink project in Data Viewer. Using Weblink to capture the contents of the computer screen that Weblink is running on really is very straightforward. Let's start by making a new project and saving it. As with the website tracking project, there are some general experimental configuration settings that we can adjust before we start adding components. If you have two monitors attached to the computer running Weblink, you can decide which screen you want to capture the contents of. If you're not sure which monitor is which, you can click the Identify button to find out. You can choose whether to record from the monitor's native resolution or to set it to a different resolution. If you have two monitors attached to the computer running Weblink, then when you run the ROP project, Weblink will remain visible in one monitor and you will record from the other. During recording, the preview area of Weblink will display the contents of the other screen as well as the gaze overlay, allowing you to monitor the participant's gaze behaviour and track it accuracy during the recording. If you just have a single monitor, then it's important to check this option so that Weblink minimises and the participant can interact with the software you want to capture. Having two monitors can be an advantage when using Weblink to do screen recordings. Finally, if the physical properties of the screen you are recording from do not match the screen configuration settings on the host PC, then you can make sure to supply the correct information here. As with all Weblink projects, you can choose whether to capture video and audio of your participants from any attached webcam. This can be particularly useful for usability or HCI research, where you may be interested in determining whether certain software components, UI designs or tasks create confusion or frustration, for example. If you have a dual monitor setup, the Enable Preview During Camera Setup and Accuracy Check preference can be very useful, as it allows you to observe the setup and calibration process in Weblink's preview panel. You can also configure the colour and style of the gaze overlay cursors and any TTL signalling that may be required to synchronise with other recording equipment. Finally, you can set up any hotkeys, participant properties and user variables that your project may require. Hotkeys can be particularly useful in screen recording scenarios, as they can be used to send messages which can then be used at the analysis stage to define interest periods in Data Viewer. See the earlier video tutorials for detailed instructions on setting up hotkeys. In order to create the project, we first drag a camera setup component to the timeline, just like in the previous projects. There are various properties that can be adjusted, all of which are fairly self-explanatory and have been covered in earlier videos. I'm just going to leave things at their default settings for this project. Then we drag a screen recording component to the timeline. The screen recording component has a number of properties that I'll run through quickly. Weblink can launch the application when the project runs. If you choose this approach, then you can specify the application and any command line parameters you may want to supply. I will select the RStudio application. Alternatively, you could simply have the software already running when you start the recording. You can also choose to record any PC sounds and set the screen recording frame rate. I'll stick with the default 30 frames per second. In the next section, you can choose the message that is written to the EDF file when the screen recording component starts whether or not you want to record eye movements, send TTLs, and whether you want to simultaneously log key presses, mouse clicks, and mouse position to the EDF file. The defaults are all fine for this project. Finally, you can set a fixed duration for the screen recording, or whether it is terminated by a specific key press or mouse event. In this project, the participant will be instructed to press the default F2 key when they have finished, so I'll just leave these blank. That's all there is to it. At this point, the project can be run and data collected. We enter a name for the recording session. The camera setup component allows us to perform a quick check that the camera is focused and the thresholds all look good, and then move on to the calibration.
Once that is complete, the screen recording component launches our studio and the participant can interact with the software just as they would normally. In a dual monitor setup like mine, WebLink remains visible in one monitor and you can observe the ongoing recording and participants gaze in the WebLink preview panel while the project is running. Here you can see both the participant screen and the WebLink screen simultaneously. Let's take a quick look at the data. If you look at the results folder of the WebLink project, you will see that WebLink saves an EDF file as well as an MP4 video of the screen capture. You can double click on the EDF recorded by WebLink to launch Data Viewer. As with any iLink data, you can play back the recording using the Animation Playback View. Data Viewer will overlay the gaze data on the screen capture video. You can adjust various properties of the playback view in the Preferences tab of the Inspector panel. For example, I find that adjusting the colour, size and location of the trial time and frame number information can be useful. You can choose to plot a cyclopean gaze cursor if you record it binocularly or whether to have a gaze trail showing during playback. Going back to the data tab of the inspector panel, if you toggle on message visibility, you can see that the timing and location of all mouse clicks and mouse position have been captured in the EDF file alongside the gaze events. These mouse events, along with key press events which are also captured, can be useful when setting interest periods. Our studio took a couple of seconds to launch, so I'm just going to insert a message to mark the time when our studio was completely loaded. I just click somewhere close in the timeline and then step through frame by frame. I can then right click in the data tab and insert a message at that time. Of course Data Viewer is designed to work with multiple EDF files within a single viewing session, so the same process can be applied to all participants. I can now use that message, along with the automatic trial results message that is sent when WebLink screen recording component terminates, to set an interest period. This will limit any subsequent output reports to just the time period when the participant was interacting with our studio. Adding messages and using them to create interest periods in this way can be useful when working with WebLink data. As with all iLink data, static or dynamic interest areas can be created and you can run the usual range of output reports. Because the layout of the RStudio interface remained the same, I can create static interest areas for each panel and then run an interest area report to get a quick sense of which panel was viewed the most. In the overlay view, the fixations and saccades are plotted over a grey background because there is no way that DataViewer can know if any single static image from the screen recording would make sense as a background. For some WebLink screen recordings, including the current one in which participants interacted with software that has a fixed layout, it can sometimes be helpful to replace the grey background with a representative image or template. This is particularly useful if you'd like to create static heat maps, for example. To make a representative background image, you can choose a suitable frame of the video in the playback view, and then turn off the gaze cursor, timing info, and interest areas if you don't want them showing. You can then save the trial view as an image file. This image file can then be selected as the background image by right clicking on the trial or trial group in the inspector panel and choosing select trial background image. Now the gaze data is overlaid on the representative background image and you can group your data, view in aggregate mode, and create heat maps in the usual way. No matter what your analysis goals, DataViewer has a wide range of features and functions that allow you to visualize and process your gaze data. And as with all Lightning data, you can output a wide range of reports. Please see our DataViewer video tutorial series for more information. I hope this video tutorial was useful. Please do check out the other videos in this series, and as ever, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact our support service via the support forum or email.